So you're looking to buy an AK and you're trying to find one that won't explode. Well, sit the f*** down. What is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers? Uh, today we're going over something that has probably hit my DMs at least one to two times a day, so I figured I'd go over it here. Uh, what to look for in buying an AK, especially your first AK. There are plenty of resources out there already about what to look for in basic AKs, starter AKs, stuff like that, but I still get this question probably at least at least multiple times a day in comments, in direct messages, uh, on pretty much every social, uh, social media platform that I have. So it's something I figured would be good to address in a video, that way I have a resource uh, to share with you guys and if you see the video then you know maybe hopefully this clears some stuff up for you because there is no shortage of new guys to the AK platform whether they're AR guys coming over there are guys that are just now of AK buying age that are going out and looking for their first firearm there's a lot of guys out there that are looking for this information and we don't want them to end up with basically a we don't want them to end up with a really badly built AK or an AK that was built with bad parts or fails headspace or something like that. So this is more or less a guide on uh, how to avoid AKs and where to buy them. Now I'm not gonna be talking about brands in this video. I figure that's a really great way to uh, attract the attention of certain lawyers at certain companies that really love to litigate. As well as I have a conflict of interest, obviously, you know, we, we sell our own AKs here. So I don't want to get into brands, which brands are good, which brands are bad. Instead, I'm just going to go over general concepts. And if you fit the bill, you fit the bill. Uh, the one we will be using today is kind of hailed as the king of lower end AKs, kind of on the budget end. This is an old school Wasser 10. I just happen to have one in the shop. So this is what we're going to be using uh, when I'm talking about different things and, and demonstrating a couple points. So. I think I've rambled enough, let's get right into the video. The first thing we're going to be talking about in today's video is Cass Trunnions. Yes, the boogeyman of every AK forum out there, Cass Trunnions. Uh, I have a whole video about this that DeLance is going to be putting up in the corner of the screen. That was a video that was a lot of fun, but it's kind of an introduction into what Cass Trunnions are. This is a Trunnion, so this is the area of the AK that holds the barrel to the receiver, it's riveted in place, and it also houses the locking lugs. So it's going to be this piece of the AK, you can barely see it, so you open up the action, but very important piece because this is the, <laughs> as made famous by the 3D print video that we did, uh, this houses the splody bits. So this contains the explosion of the uh, cartridge. When the bullet's flying out the barrel, uh, there's a lot of pressure between the bolt and the trunnion because that is where the lockup happens. So if this is made out of poorly cast metal, it's not so good for the integrity of the firearm or for the safety of your fingers and or other appendages. I don't know how you operate guns. A lot of the US made AKs uh, have cast trunnions. The reason for this is that it is infinitesimally cheaper. There's your scrap word for the day. Infinitesimally cheaper to do it that way, especially uh, compared to the way that the surplus, you know, the, the com block factories used to do it, which was high quality forgings. Those are a lot more expensive. Uh, it's not something that we do as much here in the States for the, uh, the AKs, I'm afraid. But a lot of the surplus stuff will be forged front trunnions. The rear trunnions don't matter nearly as much. That's really just to take the recoil force to house the recoil spring and to hold the stock. Those things are all super important, but not quite as important as holding up to the pressure of a 7.6239 round while it's going off. Kind of a big deal that that stays intact. So what you're really gonna be looking for is if the trunnions are cast or are they forged. A lot of the surplus guns are gonna be forged trunnions. A lot of the newer, like the new uh, PSA guns, for example, just an example, uh, those are all forged now. You're gonna be wanting to look for forged trunnions. That's not the only thing you should be looking for, but that's pretty damn important. And if you are looking for uh, an example of a gun that has gone pretty badly, just look up Cass Trunnion Catastrophic Failure AK on Google. And uh, go to images and you will find some nice examples of why you should not be buying some of the lower end guns that are being pushed pretty hard in gun stores. So, like I said, not talking about brand name right now, but the answers are there if you have the will to Google them. Second thing, uh, this one is more about the build quality. 
Uh, rivets. Rivets are important. They are these little beady beauties on the side of an AK that hold the whole gun together. So the receivers on an AK, there is no upper and lower receiver, there is just the receiver. The receiver is a stamped piece of usually one millimeter thick sheet metal that is held to all the uh, important components of the gun, like the trigger guard, the front trunnion, the rear trunnion, by rivets. Six in the front trunnion, and anywhere between two long rivets and one long rivet, two short rivets in the rear trunnion. So when we're judging the quality of rivets, we're looking for a nice even press. We are looking for flat rivets that don't have any air gap between them. If you can fit a fingernail up under the rivet, or if you can hold it up and see daylight under the rivet, that is a poorly pressed rivet. You just want to make sure that if you're buying something, even if it's a surplus kit, let's say you've identified, okay, we have a surplus AK-74 with a Nodax Bud receiver. That could have been a home builder that is building his first AK and doesn't really know how to rivet super well and slaps the kit together and you see that it's surplus on a Nodax Bud and you're like, oh great, great, it's a good quality AK. Might want to double check because if it is one of those, the rivets could be cockeyed, it could be kind of slanted. I've seen some pretty f***ed up rivets in my time and um, yeah, just go on. Go on Google Images again. Google Images can be your friend. It could also be your worst enemy if you're not careful. But this one should be fairly basic. Uh, just don't get suckered into buying an AK that has some pretty wonky looking rivets because that can, for obvious reasons, on the front trunnion, uh, that's pretty bad considering, like I said, that's where the splody bits are. On the rear trunnion, it could be a dead giveaway that the gun is horrifically overgassed if it's beating the rear trunnion out, and that's obviously bad for the integrity of the gun and the safety of the shooter long-term. So that's something to look out for. Third on the third on the list is the canted sight problem that is so common in a lot of complaints about AKs, especially people that were buying AKs a long time ago. Early import Wassers and a couple other things were uh, particularly well known for their canted sight problem. Thankfully, with better tooling and things, it's not so much of an issue these days, but it can still happen. So what a canted sight is, it's where uh, you have three barrel components on the AK. You have the rear sight block, more or less, the, the Preston pin ones. You have the uh, rear sight block, you have the gas block, and you have the front sight block. Now, these are pressed onto the barrel. If they're not pressed on 100% straight, you can have a rear sight block that's sitting this way slightly and a front sight block that is sitting this way or whatever and uh, you know you can correct that to some degree with the front sight block drum the drum sight here that can be pressed you know left to right and kind of adjusted for but some of those got really bad I mean like they, they got really bad so uh, that's a pretty easy one to look for just look down the gun and kind of especially hold it back a bit and you can see, I can actually see on this gun, the front sight block is canted a little bit to the left. This is an older Wasser, so that's not ultimately surprising. It is canted very slightly to the left. Uh, that's not really a huge deal, honestly, especially for a lot of guys, they wanna run optics on their AKs now. They wanna run an Ultimac or an RS regulate on the, on the side mount. Not a huge deal, it can be corrected on, but if you have, especially if you have really bad OCD, it is something to look out for. Now another tip that's pretty pertinent for guys that are especially buying their first AK and wanna have a good experience with it for aftermarket parts is knowing how interchangeable things like the stock and handguards are. A lot of the Yugo guns are pushed pretty hard because they're, you know, they're, they're still made in the Zastava factory and they're, they're fairly, uh, they're well-made guns and they're a pretty low price point for what you get. However, a lot of guys get bamboozled by the Yugo pattern stocks uh, with the Yugo stock bolts and the very particular way that they have set up their handguards. There's not as much interchangeability with normal AK aftermarket parts as there is on pretty much anything else. Same goes for a lot of milled guns. A lot of milled guns have that double tang in the rear and people get kind of off put when their normal AK style stock won't fit on. There's The AK is kind of known for needing a lot of custom fitment. I think that's probably a reputation that it doesn't deserve. I think a lot of people just buy certain brands of AK and they get really irritated when standard aftermarket parts don't work. This is a problem that's really easily avoidable if you just know what you're buying ahead of time and ask 
don't be afraid of asking or don't be afraid of Googling what the interchangeability is on the parts. So if you want to be able to take, I, I think most standard AKs, the, the, the AK that you should be buying for your first rifle, should be able to take any aftermarket AK pistol grip, any aftermarket fire control group, aftermarket stock, and aftermarket handguards. That should be a basic. That way you can kind of play around with some of the parts that you want, some of the parts that you're maybe interested in, and you could see what fits you. See what you like, and then you can make up your own mind, especially when you're buying your second, third, fourth, fifth, or 92nd AK. Pro tip. Pro tip. This is a bullet, a 7.62 by 39 caliber bullet. This is the same gun that I've been holding this whole video, so that shouldn't be surprising. This is what's called the bullet test. And uh, if your local gun store will allow you to carry live ammunition into their store, what you can do to check the bore on these guns, make sure you take the muzzle brake off, make sure you take you know, the flash hider or whatever is on uh, the front end of the gun at the time. You can actually test the quality of the rifling that is still left in the, the bore of the barrel. Or, you know what I mean. You can test how much rifling is left and how basically burned out your barrel may or may not be, especially in a lot of the old surplus guns that have had God knows how many rounds through that barrel. So because the bullet is still protruding a good bit, this is still a pretty good barrel. This barrel's okay. If the cartridge sinks all the way down, or most of the way down, then that means that that barrel has seen better days and probably quite a few thousands of rounds and uh, if you're going to buy it, at least get a good deal on it because there's a pretty good chance that if you want decent groupings at decent ranges, you're going to have to replace it at some point. Another side note that would probably benefit you is to invest in a pair of head spacing gauges, especially if this whole AK thing is something that you really think you're gonna be interested in. Head spacing gauges are a godsend if you're trying to figure out, uh, if you're just basically trying to get a read on the quality of an AK build, it can be extremely useful to know if it's in and out of headspace. Now for those, just a basic thing on headspace, headspace is referring to the distance between the barrel, the chamber of the barrel rather, and the uh, trunnion, the locking lugs, and where the bolt sits and interfaces with those. Basically just making sure that it's not too tight, meaning that there's not enough space for the bolt to freely rotate and lock the round into battery. And there's not too little space, excuse me, and there's not so much space that when it does lock up, it can freely travel back and forth and basically you have a lot of uns unsupported cartridge all the way in the rear position, which can cause a catastrophic malfunction and blow out the front of your gun. There's a lot of problem that those cast running AKs kind of have because they can work themselves out of headspace because the metal performs. You may see headspace gauges as an unnecessary expense. If you don't want to buy them, at least borrow them from a friend or a gunsmith or something and just check your guns out there is nothing wrong with finding out what the headspace situation is on your guns because you can accidentally find out that you really have a problem that you need to fix. Not running headspacing gauges on a gun that you intend to shoot is kind of like not buying a pregnancy test because you're afraid to know the actual answer. If there is a problem, you're going to find out eventually. It's just better to know in advance. And that just about wraps up all the tips I have for you today. If there is something in this video that you think I missed, please leave a comment down in the comment section. And uh, who knows, maybe we might do a follow-up, we might do another video like this. So if you guys would, go ahead and leave those tips for new buyers in the comment section and uh, probably the pinned comment of this video. I might do a little bit of a, a list of things that people in the comments have suggested that maybe I missed. So uh, with that, I'm going to plug the new merch real quick. Get these shades out of the way. On uh, thirdpinthreads.com, we do have the new style of shirt. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, Tony did a good job with picking out the good colors. I, I, I don't, I have no fashion sense at all if you guys haven't figured that out by now. He did a good job with the dark, the navy blue, and the, the orange kind of distressed look. I like him a lot. I'll probably be wearing him more. So if you want to pick up one of these bad boys, thirdpinthreads.com. Uh, Tony's a good dude and I like supporting stuff. So anyway, uh, that is just about all I have for today as far as the buyer guide for the AK. Um, again, leave your comments below. Hashtag AKG Notification Squad is still alive and well, so don't forget about that. And I will see you sexy motherfuckers in the next video. Thanks, guys. I got nothing. There's a lot of brands that I am not talking about in this video that are complete shit and you should never buy from them, but thankfully, 
I can avoid lawsuit by just telling the comment section, you know which ones, and I don't have to say it because you guys will, you will preach it to the heavens, and good on you for it. That's why you'll get into heaven. So this is another tip that's going to be especially useful. <laughs> I almost went this whole time without flubbing a single tape. Let me actually think about what I'm going to say before I just start lunging into it. Infinitesimally means by a tiny amount. Infinitesimally? Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you're looking exponentially, infinitely. Shit. But Did I really just use that? Yeah, infinitesimally is like, by, by like always... a negligible amount. Damn it. 